All right. <laughs> Hello again. Welcome back. Welcome back to my class. Welcome back to the one on one class with yours truly, the counselor, Mr. James Horton. Today we're going to um, work with a lesson called, uh, it's called The Courage to Be Vulnerable. The courage to be vulnerable in relationships is what it's called. The courage to be vulnerable in relationships with yours truly, the counselor. Uh, let's get started. It says, the courage to be vulnerable in relationships. It says, finding what it means to be vulnerable in relationships. Being vulnerable is actually letting people and relationships partners know who you really are. Being vulnerable also allows people to know who their relationship partner truly is. Being vulnerable is necessary in having and finding true love in relationships. Being vulnerable opens the door for mutual trust. Being vulnerable also has its dark side, like the things some of us are known to do to others after receiving someone's admission, confession, disposal, or publication when we want to harm or hurt someone. All right, ask yourself questions, all right? Excuse me, a little warm out here. It says, number one, in most of your relationships, do you fear exposing all parts of yourself and becoming vulnerable with your partner because of the past hurts and pains you've experienced in your past? Like. I mean, like, it can become very scary for some of us, very kind of fragile when we've already been there, we've already thought we could trust somebody. When uh, some of our parents or those who played the role of parent, uh, we may have been around them and been like exposing ourselves or been exposed to such a place to where the trust was broken, right? So. It can be a little scary meeting someone and even meeting someone new and finding out that their trust has been broken or you're being exposed in such a way. Okay, number two. Do you know it takes courage and willingness to be vulnerable when it comes to finding the right relationship partner for yourself? It takes courage. You know, how the hell you think that it's easy to have gone through some of the things like your counselor has gone through, uh, being out there in the street. I mean, actually just getting towed up, you know, hiding, don't want nobody to see you, you know what I mean? But, uh, I mean, and then like, boom, uh, going through years of that and then finally cleaning it all up, finally getting a new start. I mean, hitting some touchdowns and all kind of stuff like that. But yet, still, that's that past. That's that past there. And can you tell a new person your past and hope that they'll take it in and respect it instead of jumping on you and bringing your past back up to destroy you. You feel me? So, um, number two, I mean, number three. Do you believe being vulnerable in your relationships is a sign, is a sign of weakness or do you believe it's a sign of strength, right? Some people believe, I mean, we've gotten some bad information and a lot of us, a lot of us, <coughs> a lot of people believe, a lot of us believe, right, that we've been told that that's being weak. We've been taught that's being weak, you know, crying or uh, whatever. Oh, I'm a man. Oh, uh, I'm a woman. Or this person's a woman. And, and, and we've been taught that if you show a weaker side or a softer side of yourself, if you cry, right, that means that you're weak. Oh, no, let's not get it twisted. Take it from the council. That's a sign of strength. That's a sign of strength to be able to do that, right? Whether you're a man or whether you're a woman, you know, especially we need to get on these men about that, you know, get on these sons about that. It's okay to cry. It's okay to let that stuff out. This is what one of the chambers that God has given us so we can loosen it up and let some stuff out. Uh, one needs to also know that pressure busts a pipe. You know, you don't want to keep building that stuff in and not letting it out. You need a release on you. You need to open up a release chamber so that stuff can get out, right? And if you have to come through crying 
uh, 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 yelling out, whatever it takes, be okay with you. All right? Uh huh. So, we're going to go to number four. Do you fear, block, and avoid opening the door to your vulnerable past in most of your relationships and with others because you're afraid of being hurt and shamed, right? <laughs> Again, I've also often say uh, <laughs> secrets. Secrets die in the light of exposure. They do. They die in the light of exposure. Put some light on it. You know what I mean? You know, because when you don't put some light on it and somebody knows some things, they, get, they can hurt you. You know, I always say I'm going to be open. Whoever I'm with, I'm going to be open. I'm going to tell my story before I let another person tell my story and have the power. No, I'm going to keep my own power. So you might want to think about that. Number five, do you know when it comes to most people who are known to hold on to hurtful, sick secrets to avoid being vulnerable, has most of us, most of those people being sick as their secrets? 52 weeks of domestic violence classes with George Truly, the counselor. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, we're gonna hit that. What I just said. Number six. For those of, for those who know, and for those who may not know, who find themselves fearing being vulnerable in life and in their relationships. Remember, and take note, secrets die in the light of exposure. Let's get you with that, right? Um, yeah, so, like I say, <laughs> get you some willingness. Get you some willingness. <laughs> Number seven, when dealing with your own insecurities, are you known to seek and search for the vulnerable weak, sick, and broken relationship type partner to make yourself feel whole and complete. Uh, it, it, people often wonder, and I, I did some, uh, some research on this, and uh, with myself, and as well as watching others, I'm always watching others, I've been like that as a little boy. Um, people often wonder, how did these two people get together, right? And how did I, at times, in past, kind of messed up, what I would say, relationships, how did this person, how did I get with this person here? How did you get with this particular person here? Well, my uh, research on it says that a lot of times when we meet somebody, we meet somebody at a broken stage in our life. And being at a broken stage in your life and in my life can have a person finding something that matches that brokenness. Right, so I'm broken. I'm feeling about solo. Right, you feeling about solo, and when you see somebody that's looking solo, you'll find yourself connected with that solo. Right, and then after a while, you'll notice, man, what am I doing here? What am I with this person for? I mean, how did I get here? Right, I don't even like that type. I mean, listen to her, I listen to him. I mean, uh, right, boom. Uh, women are like, uh, how did she get, how did they get with this dude that's just in and out of prison all the time, right? Don't make him a bad guy, but uh, he seems like he likes spending more time in prison than he does in his nice home, right? He's only going to be here for a minute, but how did she get with him, right? Boom. You know, how did she decide to marry him? He's not even coming home, right? But it's like, boom, this is like what's, what's. What's wrong with us? All right, now, number eight. <clears throat> Are you known to use violence and abuse on your relationship partners to hide or disguise the weak, vulnerable side your partner may or may not know about you, right? Some of us is like, boom, if I be hard, right? If I, boom, knock her teeth out, boom. If she hit him upside the head with the frying pan, Right? It's like, boom, we can look tough. We can look like we ain't got no weak sides to us. Right? But we really don't want, many times people don't want no one to know about that vulnerable side. Right? So we act out as monsters, as animals, and all kind of stuff. 
But what are we really hiding, right? What are we afraid of exposing within ourselves can be the question, and is the question. Okay, now, we're going to close this out. It says, when it comes to the relationships and the vulnerable partners you're known to choose, do you pick vulnerable partners because you believe you would be safe from exposing your own weak, vulnerable areas in your life, right? I mean, hey, you know, I'm feeling a little uh, vulnerable. I'm feeling a little slow. So why not pick up a slow poke? I'm feeling a little broken. So why would not find another broken puzzle to join myself in with? I mean, I don't feel I fit with anything. Or you may not feel you fit with anything. So let me get an unfit to go with my unfit, right? And we'll just fit it on out being vulnerable, right? And expose ourselves in such an unhealthy, vulnerable kind of way. All right. That's going to be it for the class. Thank you again.